So you may be wondering, huh, I drink a lot of coffee, but I'm having a lot of gut issues. Is there a correlation? Well, in this video today, we'll discuss everything you need to know about coffee and pooping. Why does coffee make you poop? Does decaf or other high caffeinated drinks have the same effect? Does it matter if you add milk or cream to your coffee? I'll tell you it matters. And all this and more in today's video. Guys, let's talk about poop. Howdy y'all, Dr. Samir here, AKA your poop guru. Trying to give you the best tips and tricks to help out with your health. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, for goodness sake, don't forget to subscribe to my weekly newsletter where you can get great tips and tricks just like you're gonna learn in this video. Coffee, oh my goodness, I am such a fan of coffee. I drink it all the time. I think of myself as a, as a coffee connoisseur where I love to try different types of coffee, but I have noticed with myself that if I have too much coffee, it can cause a lot of gut issues and I'm not the only one. This is one of the most commonly researched things on the internet and a common question I get. I'm gonna answer those questions and more in today's video. So why exactly does coffee make you poop? Is it just caffeine alone or is there more to it? Is it because coffee is a bean? Well, amazingly enough, we actually do not know the answer to this. We think it may be a combination of different things. We know that coffee initiates the gastrocolic reflex. This is a reflex in which coffee actually goes into your stomach and all of a sudden wakes up your stomach, jolts it awake, and it causes a contraction to go from your stomach to your small intestine and to your colon. This is why you have to poop pretty quickly after you drink some coffee. That gastrocolic reflex gets stimulated and things go, woo! Everything goes crazy after that. But we also know that there may be a role in the acidity of the coffee as well. Both caffeinated and decaf coffee have a certain acid called chlorogenic acid. This actually helps to trigger more stomach acid inside your body. And that increase in stomach acid actually causes your stomach to contract more and more and more to help stimulate even more that gastrocolic reflex. But once again, we're not quite sure which of the hundreds of chemicals actually does play a role in making that acid higher. And then lastly, we know the beans do play a role. Those beans and oils inside coffee tend to trigger your GI tract to move quicker and more often. Will decaf have the same effect? Well, the answer to that is yes. Both decaf and caffeinated coffee will help move your bowels. Though we do know that caffeinated coffee tends to move your bowels more and more effectively. So if you're looking to poop, I recommend trying a caffeinated cup of joe. Can you swap in other highly caffeinated drinks and receive a similar effect? What are some alternatives to coffee? Well, unfortunately, the answer to that is no. There's something specifically within coffee, whether it's the acid, maybe it's the beans or the oils, that tends to do the trick. If you have other caffeinated drinks like Coke or Five Hour Energy, you don't get the same effect as you do with coffee with respect to making you poop. What is the connection between coffee and health? So this is a fascinating topic. There are studies going on right now in which we're trying to figure out how coffee plays a role with health. And we do know it plays a significant role in terms of improving mortality, making you live longer, improving your liver, decreasing your risk for colon cancer, decreasing your risk for cardiovascular disease like CHF or heart failure, heart disease and stroke, and decreasing your risk for Parkinson's. But there's active research going on right now to determine what other diseases coffee may play a role in protecting you from. Does it matter if you add milk or cream to your coffee? Would that help or hinder this effect? Ah, unfortunately, it makes a difference. Coffee and cream tends to negate the effect that we're getting with black coffee. All the studies I talked about, whether it's dealing with your liver, decreasing your risk for colon cancer, improving your health, all have to do with black coffee. And unfortunately, there is no evidence that that extra cream, extra sugar, the extra milk that's so, so good is going to have the same effect as it would with black coffee. And besides, come on, you're adding extra cream and extra sugar, you're adding more calories, that's not gonna be good for you guys, come on. Does this effect manifest itself differently in men versus women? So it makes no difference if you're a guy or a girl with respect to coffee and the effect on your gut health and your overall health. It affects men and women the exact same. Do conditions like IBS or lactose intolerance or GERD factor into this at all? Absolutely, positively, 100%. 
If you're somebody who has constipation or irritable bowel syndrome with constipation predominant, drinking coffee can maybe help out with your bowels. But on the other side of the spectrum, if you have diarrhea, guess what? Coffee is gonna give you worsening diarrhea. If you have heartburn or reflux, coffee tends to open up that valve between the esophagus and stomach, making it more likely for the acid to go up into that esophagus and cause more burning to occur. And keep in mind, like I mentioned before, coffee has its own acid, which will double up or triple up the amount of acid inside your stomach to make gut issues worse. So if you're predisposed to having gut issues, whether it's IBS, heartburn, reflux, diarrhea, or constipation, coffee may make it a little bit worse. And then lastly, how much coffee do you need to drink to achieve this desired effect? So everyone is different when it comes to coffee. I've known people that have had coffee forever and they drink coffee, no response whatsoever. And there are others who typically don't drink a lot and they have a little bit and boom, their GI tract gets all jacked up. It depends on a lot of different conditions, what your tolerance is to coffee. Do you have some of those conditions that I talked about before like IBS? Do you have a sensitive stomach? Are you on certain medications? Is there a genetic predisposition to having metabolism for coffee? Who knows, but a lot of factors come into play. But in general, up to 400 milligrams of caffeine tends to be safe in the average individual. That correlates to about four cups of brewed coffee, 10 cans of cola, which is a freaking lot. If you're drinking 10 cans, don't do that. Or two energy shots. But keep in mind, every single person is different. So these are the most common questions I have seen about coffee and your gut. My question today for you, what questions you have about that cup of joe and your gut health, comment down below. I love to hear what you guys have to say. But I thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. Like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to a weekly newsletter where you can get great tips and tricks just like in this video. Hope you guys have a happy, healthy, and poop-free day. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.